So welcome. It is May 26 of 2020, and my name's Louis Shanafelt, and I am the Equatio product manager slash evangelist from TextHelp. And my Twitter handle there is if you'd like to follow or ask me any questions after this webinar. And I want to introduce you to Megan. Megan's uh, been a uh, kind of a virtual friend of mine, and we've been able to connect and do some webinars together since. Megan, is uh, let you introduce yourself if you want. Yep. Sure. Hi, I'm Megan Mongelli. I'm a technology integration specialist in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Um, I have the honor and the privilege of serving students in kindergarten through 12th grade, and I support teachers and students as they integrate technology into their classroom. Um, but I'm a former classroom teacher as well, first and second grade teacher, um, and an elementary technology teacher. Please follow me on Twitter. Let's get connected so we can start sharing resources and collaborating. So join the free online community. This is one of the uh, websites I mentioned earlier. So lots of good stuff in here. Uh, if you haven't joined yet, we would encourage you to go to edweb.net front slash math. As a member, you'll get access to all these resources, which include viewing and sharing this recording, taking the CE quiz, uh, downloading the slides and the chat log, joining in discussions, getting invitations to upcoming ed webinars. Um, so lots of good reasons to join. Uh, please, please click on that link down there at the bottom, edweb.net front slash math. Uh, in introduce myself here real quick. Uh, my name is Louis Shanafelt, as I mentioned, and I am currently the Equatio product manager at TextHelp. Uh, prior to joining TextHelp, I see we got lots of Florida people in the room. I actually worked in Orange County schools here in Central Florida, uh, just outside of Orlando, and I taught elementary school, middle school, um, for the eighth largest district in the nation. So really, really big district. Um, I then joined the district office as an instructional designer. And uh, following that up, I became a district administrator. Um, I don't think I even got to enjoy that for under a year. And then I was just thrilled to have the opportunity to join TextHelp. Um, so I decided after 20 years that I really wanted to try something new. Uh, and I really, really love TextHelp products, uh, especially Equatio, which I hope to demo for you today. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter again, it is at TH underscore Louis S. Uh, Megan, go ahead and introduce yeah. yourself again, if you don't mind. Absolutely. I'm Megan Mongelli. I am currently a technology integration specialist in Fort Mill, South Carolina. I assist um, teachers and students as they integrate technology into their curriculum kindergarten through 12th grade and lead professional development opportunities for our teachers as well. I always say my role in teaching is like the grandparenting of teaching. I get to come in, do all the fun stuff, and then I get to go. Um, but I absolutely love my job and I love supporting, empowering, and inspiring teachers. And I hope that I'm able to do that for you as well. And my background in teaching comes from the primary, the younger grades. So I'm great for um, helping you out with those ideas for littles. I know, especially in remote learning, engaging with our littles is very difficult. So we can focus a little bit on that, as well as those strategies all the way up through 12th grade. So I've taught second grade, first grade, and then technology for kindergarten through fifth graders. Yeah. So even though we've talked a little bit about Twitter here, just to you know reemphasize, there's so many great things up there in, in, in the Twitter universe and other different communities, including I'm sure in the EdWeb community. But I kind of found Megan and ran across Megan through Twitter um, just by searching hashtags, and I just saw you know how great you really write. So uh, there's a lot of a lot of great people at district offices that help and support teachers. I'm sure you know those people in your district uh, and was really, really excited to be able to kind of partner with Megan, bring her expertise in here, and hopefully we can, uh, you know, learn from one another. So appreciate Megan, obviously you joining me today. Uh, we know we'll have some great things to share with everybody. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and throw the first part of this presentation to Megan's way and let her show some of the tools that she has used during remote learning in her school district. So take it away, Megan. Thank you. No pressure. So if we lose half the audience, uh-oh. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and share my screen here. Give me one yep. moment. Perfect. Awesome. So I'm going to go over with you some ed tech tools that can support you and your students as you're um, participating and doing math during remote learning. So I think one of the most important questions that we have to ask ourselves during remote learning is how do we create equitable learning experiences for our students during remote learning? And I always want to emphasize to our teachers that equitable doesn't necessarily mean equal. 
So Equal would be providing the exact same thing for every single student in our classroom. And as educators, we know that doesn't always work. But equitable experiences would be experiences for our students where we're giving every student what they need to be successful. And in remote learning, that becomes extremely crucial. So um, I think one of the most important things I want to say is I want to start with just two tips. The first tip is as you make this transition from a paper environment to a digital environment would be to just start small. Use the tech tools that you and your students already know and use. The, and then not just that, but use it in every single way possible. And I say that with a caveat of, you know, we obviously don't want to drone on and on and on and bore our students, but really taking time to get dive into tools and get creative um, before we start introducing a new tool for them. And then as a parent, especially during remote learning with my students or my children at home with me, I just want to warn you that we also need to be aware of technology overload, not just for our students, and our, but our parents as well. Throwing too many ed tech tools at our students at one time can be very overwhelming from there to, for them to navigate independently. And it's also overwhelming for our parents to have to learn this foreign language of all these different ed tech tools like GimKit and quizzes that sounds completely foreign to the English that we're used to speaking. So I've started with those two important tips. Um, but now I just want to talk with you a little bit about how do we make this transition from a typical lesson in my classroom, which would have been a paper pencil activity to a digital activity? And how does that look in terms of equity? So in our presentation, I have some links that um, will be accessible to you. And if you need any additional resources, please feel to, to um, just go ahead and send me a message on Twitter. We'll make sure we get these in your hands. So this portion of our presentation, I'm gonna frame under this basic paper lesson. So being an ed tech, um, tech integration specialist, I don't have my math curriculum at home with me. So I kind of made just a quick Google doc of what this would look like, a simple, paper activity in my classroom. If I'm a second grade teacher and I'm teaching my students how to add whole tents, I'm taking this from the lens of a second grade teacher, but remember that this could be applied to any content area. So in a paper activity for our students at home that maybe don't have access to tech, I would have a paper activity that includes my content and instruction for them to see, similar to what we've already done in the classroom in a very familiar manner for them. And then I would have some example problems and problems for them to solve independently. So that would be a simple paper activity that students without access to tech at home um, could access and use. Now you can take that same pa paper activity and digitize it using a variety of different tools. So one of the links I'm going to share with you today is this Google Doc, and it basically summarizes my entire presentation here with you with a bunch of tools and resources for you to use and explore later. When I attend conferences and webinars, I like to have stuff that I can take back into my classroom and apply and use immediately. So that's what all of these links are here for you. I'm going to preview each of them for you kind of quickly. Um, and again, the, the purpose of this is to provide you with some tools and ideas and templates. I unfortunately do not have the time to go into the logistics of how to create, do, and apply everything that we use, but, but the templates are there for you to modify. So the first tool I want to highlight for you from transitioning from a paper activity like that simple adding tens one um, would be Google Classroom. Google Classroom is always my go-to and my first point. It is a simple paperless workflow for you and your students. As a teacher, I can create an interactive remote learning experience for my students simply by creating an assignment. And then my students can then complete an assignment that might have an attached worksheet or Google Doc, or I might even just take my phone and take a picture of our workbook, pop it into Google Classroom. Then my students, they can see that picture and that image or that file, and they can complete those problems on pencil paper. One of the beautiful things about Google Classroom then is then you're able to then upload an image of your work to Google Classroom. And I can see not just my students answer, but their entire thinking behind the problem. If you wanna see what that looks like over here on this how section of my presentation, 
I have a sample Google Classroom for you to join, you will have to do that with your personal Google account. So you'll simply navigate to classroom.google.com, click the plus sign and join class and enter in this code. And you can see what an example of this assignment would look like. The other really, really great way you can use Google Classroom in your, with your students during remote learning is by using the Google Classroom mobile app. So not the web-based on my computer, but using my phone or my iPad. This gives me the ability to annotate on files. So remember that set work, um, I'm sorry, that picture of a worksheet that we took? As a teacher, I can create that assignment. And then if my students use the mobile app, they can click on that picture that I took of our workbook. And when they do, they'll get a little pen icon in the top right hand corner. And that's going to allow them to have a drawing menu. And they can annotate, write, use a stylus, show all of their work, solve their problem right on their screen and submit it back to me. So very simply, without having to do a lot on my end as a teacher, I'm able to create a paperless workflow using Google Classroom. A pro tip, teachers can also use the Google Classroom mobile app. So if students submit work to you as the teacher, you can use the mobile app and annotate directly on their work to show any misconceptions um, on their work. A couple of my favorite, favorite things to do with Google Forms are these three bullet points. I love using Google Forms for quizzes. The reason why I like that is because quizzes allows me as a teacher to get instant feedback and my students to get infant, instant feedback from an assessment. So here's a simple form. It's the same exact problems that I had on that paper activity, but I've just put it into a digital format. I can tell this is a quiz because there's a point value assigned to each question. I'm going to click the edit button here so you can see what this looks like. When you create a Google form, you have the option to make it a quiz. To add a quiz feature, all you do is click the settings here and you will click quizzes and you will toggle this button on to make it a quiz. Once you have your form set up as a quiz, you then have some different options that you can allow for your students, like allowing them to see any missed questions, correct answers, points values. My favorite feature, of this answer key within the quizzes is once I set my question here and I click on the answer key, I can say what the correct answer is, assign my point. But down here, I love this. This, if I click on this, allows me to add answer feedback. So if my student answers this question incorrectly, I can post a link and I can post a YouTube video. If you get this answer incorrect, watch this video to reteach the content before moving on to the next question. I can add answer feedback for correct and incorrect questions in Google Forms. A fun way to engage your students during remote learning is to make something called an impossible to fail Google Form. Again, the same questions and same content that we've already seen, but you can see it's segmented in a different approach, especially during remote learning by kind of chunking our assignment, it keeps our students a little bit more engaged with the task at hand. So for this problem, as the students try to solve it, let me go ahead and type in my name here. If they get it incorrect, they'll get an error message and you can customize this. I customize mine to say you can do it. They cannot move on to the next question until they get that answer correct. And then you can have some fun, um, add some images and some GIFs in here to keep your students engaged as they work. Let me show you how I did that. So in my Google form, this one was not set up as a form. It's just a, um, excuse me, as a quiz, just a regular Google form. I set up my questions as a short answer question. And then on these three dots beside my Google form, I turned on something called response validation. When you enable response validation, it then gives you the opportunity to customize what you're looking for. I want my students to answer that this number is equal to 160. And if they get it incorrect, I wanna tell them you can do it or keep trying. Now my form is set up that my students have to answer 160 before moving on. And again, that was just found under these three dots in my Google form. So I'd like to keep that simple, about five problems because we don't want our students to get fatigued or worn out or stressed out as they're trying to solve those problems. But the beautiful thing about an impossible to fail form 
is that it really makes sure that your students aren't practicing math incorrectly. The last thing we want our do students to do is to keep practicing math wrong. And perhaps my most favorite way of using Google Forms is to create digital breakouts where our students are creating these virtual escape rooms and really critically thinking as they try to solve different problems. So here's just a quick example. Um, so here's the same problem that I've done on all the other Google Forms, which started out with 80 plus 80. However, instead of just giving my students that problem, I put it in kind of the form of a little bit of, of riddle. Find the third soccer player, double his number to open this lock. So once you find that third soccer player, you realize his number is 80. So 80 plus 80 is equal to 160. I did that response validation like I did on the previous form. So I have to get it right before I move on. You can add images and all sorts of different things into your Google Forms to make really engaging activities for your student, like a digital breakout. Google Slides is also a wonderful tool to use with your students during remote learning. You can use this to create drag and drop activities and fill in the blank activities. So again, thinking about that paper assignment at the very beginning, it's the same content, but done in a different manner. So you can see what I've done here is I have my problems and I have a drag and drop activity. I've color coded each of these squares for a reason because now my students can click and drag and solve the different problems on here. The reason why I did that is I use Google Classroom to assign my Google Slides. If my slides are color coded when students submit their work, I can really quickly have a visual answer key as students submit if I know that I am looking on each slide for green and blue in the top and different colors on the bottom as well. Another thing I wanted to point out is when you make these Google Slides activity, a pro tip would be to set up your numbers in the background as the background of your slide and only allow certain things to be manipulated, especially with those little learners. They can click and drag and move stuff around faster than you can even say hello. So a way to add that to your background is create this just with text boxes and images how you normally would in shapes here. Then click on the slide that you want to use and click File, Download As, and download it as an image, either a JPEG or a PNG image. This will put your image here. And when you add your slide, you can click on Background, and you can just drag and drop your image so that that is now a part of the slide and the students can't move anything that's on here. So just a quick pro tip for you there. Um, the same is true with fill in the blank activities. You can create a really, really simple fill in the blank activity with Google Slides by typing your questions out, downloading it as an image, throwing it into the background of your slide, and then you can just put a text box and your students can simply click on the text box to add the answers to their questions on here. So Google Slides is perfect um, for each of those activities. If you don't have time, because that's something that we all need more of, especially right now, to create all those slides in advance for your students, you can add that image from your workbook or of a worksheet that you have that you want your students to solve. And then your students can solve those problems on a piece of paper. After they have their problem solved on a piece of paper, they can hop back into Google Slides and go to insert image from camera, hold up their work and snap a picture of their pencil paper work so that you can see the thinking behind each of their answers. Pear Deck is an add-on for Google Slides. If you haven't used Pear Deck before, this allows you, you have to install it first, it allows you to create interactive Google slideshows. So after you add the Pear Deck icon, it will give you a sidebar on the right hand side. And it allows you to create a um, template of interactive questions for you to use before, during and after a lesson. It allows you to use templates that are already created. So I've included a link in here, if you scroll on down, they have a whole slide deck dedicated to just Pear Deck activities for math, ready to go. And you can create an interactive Google slideshow. The reason why I love this is because it allows you as the teacher to create a self 
paste student slide deck. So I put the link in here so you can kind of see what that looks like and how to use it. Perfect for remote learning but it allows your students to work at their own pace through an interactive slide deck. And then just last week, Pear Deck tweeted out a new teacher feedback feature. So as students work on their interactive Google slide, you as the teacher in real time can provide them with feedback on their different problems as they're working through their slide deck. We absolutely love Seesaw for our younger students, but I know and promise you that you can use it all the way up through high school as well. So Seesaw is a digital learning platform that allows your students to create a portfolio. But what does this look like for remote learning? Well, the first place I would send you would be to the Seesaw Activities Library. So within their activity library, you are able to browse by grade level and subject area, pre-made activities by other teachers just like you to get started creating interactive activities for your students. They're ready to go. If you use the free version, like me, I'm a teacher, so everything I want is free, 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 you only get 100 activities in the free version. But 100 activities is still plenty, especially during remote learning. However, if you don't want to work with activities, you need to check out the copy and edit feature in Seesaw. So I've clicked a link on here to show you how you edit a post. The default in Seesaw is to have this feature turned off for your students. So in the teacher, you have to go into your classroom and enable this. What your students can then do from Seesaw is click the three dots beside any single post, and then they have an option to copy and edit that item. Well, what does that mean? That means for me in Google Slides, I can make an interactive worksheet or problems for my students to solve. I can download it as an image. I can upload it into Seesaw, and my students can copy and edit and annotate directly on top of that with the built-in drawing tool. They also have the ability within Seesaw to add text and audio and real-time drawing so you see your students thinking as they solve their different math problems. Flipgrid is one of those hot ed tech tools right now that are, has a ton of different ways for you to use it. So I wanted to show you just a couple different ways that you can use that during remote learning. Um, but I first wanted to show you that there is a K-12 math Flipgrid community here for you. And this PDF file walks through different ways of integrating Flipgrid in your K-12 math classroom. But what I love most about Flipgrid is it has a built-in whiteboard tool. Now, Flipgrid alone, some think of it just as a video response tool where your students can record videos, which is also wonderful for the math classroom. Your students can hold up their pencil paper and record a video and explain how they got their problems. Or they can use the whiteboard tool and that will make a video of them solving their video in real time that they can submit to you. Flipgrid also has a disco library, which is fun, just the name of it alone, right? But in the disco library, one of the things that you can do is you can choose your grade level and your subject area, and you can filter through the different topics that are already created for you. And when you find one of these topics that you would like to use in your classroom, all you have to do is add it. It's set up and it's ready to go. So the Disco Library is a great place to help you work smarter, not harder. All if you've right. used Flipgrid before, how are we doing, Lewis? Uh, we're ready to wrap soon here. Okay. Yep, so if, yep. you, if you've used Flipgrid before, one thing that I would point out to you is that you can use it in new and creative ways. So just check them out on Twitter. They have a lot of different ideas there for you to get started. So I guess my final thoughts is those were a bunch of different ed tech tools. But as you think about your ed tech tools and how you're using them in the classroom, I always ask myself, who's doing the most work, the teacher or the student? And I really feel like in a lot of these ways, the teacher was doing the most work. And during remote learning, when we're all juggling so much, like being a classroom teacher, a homeschool teacher, the psychologist for your family, the chef, we need to really work smarter, not harder. And that's where 
at a product like Equatio really, really helps because it brings the best features of all of those different ed tech tools that I showed you together. It's like Target, one-stop shopping for all of your math needs. <laughs> That's right. So you're going to get a copy of all these. And I wanted to kind of introduce to you a product from my end. And Megan's done an outstanding job. Lots of different um, you know, uh, questions coming in. I've tried to do my best to keep up with those, Megan, but you might want to scroll up just a little. Um, so one thing that's really important to notice, and, and you guys are aware of this, you know, a lot of us are math educators here in this webinar, but, you know, when we think about math in general, math hasn't really changed, right? It's just the way that we teach it, um, that shift and that mindset, you know, hopefully is going to tend to change um, and unfortunately, you know, we, we sadly say and it, it took an, like an international and global pandemic to think, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to how am I going to encourage, um, you know, digital and remote instruction online uh, with a very difficult subject area? Right. So worksheets don't allow for critical thinking or math manipulation uh, and, and students aren't really collaborating in math class. So what can we do to, uh, you know, to increase that? So when we think about numbers in general, and how students are performing on the nation's report card, not necessarily just my state, but across the United States. Um, you know, they score below proficiency in math at 60% when you look at the fourth graders and 67% when you think of the eighth graders. So it's really, really staggering numbers. And we want to make sure, you know, and I've always encouraged this of my kids, like Megan's got small children. I try and tell my kids, like, to think of yourself and actually my son, you know, maybe because we live in central Florida, but like he wants to design a roller coaster. You know, he's talking about being an engineer and kind of just having those discussions is really important to make sure that students know that the STEM fields are are highly, highly you know, important for people to know about. So um, when I show you uh, and introduce you to Equatio today uh, and as the product manager slash evangelist for this, you know, one of the main reasons why I wanted to bring Megan on was not only for, you know, her expertise and how she supports and helps teachers in her district, but she's a huge fan of Equatio, as as her Bitmoji announced there. Um, she does a much better job at those than I do. Uh, know that Equatio is available on four platforms, okay? So everyone's aware it's throughout the G Suite. And look at all the different ways you can use this through the G Suite. So Megan peeked into forms there, but didn't necessarily show you Equatio in forms, which is perfectly fine, because um, if we have some time here at the end, I want to show that. But when we think about Equatio in general, we know that it works in docs, forms, sheets, slides, and drawings. Uh, within the Windows environment, we work in Microsoft Word. We also have Equatio Mass Space, which we're going to have a small amount of time. Megan's going to show you that as soon as I'm done with my overview. And then finally, we have really, really integrated well with some LMSs out there. So uh, for any Canvas users, uh, Schoology and Brightspace D2L, we have an Equatio for LMS LTI integration as well. So I'm going to take you right into a quick demo. It's going to be very quick. And I'm going to share my screen here. So, so you guys can see my Google Doc there on your screen. And one thing that I wanted to show you here is this product here, which is absolutely amazing. Literally blew my mind three or four years ago when this first launched because I taught in a one-to-one, -one, you know, uh, a digital uh, computer uh, school. And kids were coming to my room with laptops in hand. And it always made me feel really uncomfortable to tell all my kids to get out paper and pencil because it, there really wasn't a math editor out there on the market. So it felt really unfair for all those kids to be able to use their devices and to be able to experience their subject areas and everything but their math and STEM fields. So with that being said, I'm going to keep a close eye on time here. Notice down here, I'm in a Google Doc. So if you're in Microsoft Word, it's perfectly fine. And we have Equatio down here at the bottom. So notice I launched the Chrome extension. So I have already launched this Chrome extension because I want to take you into a very quick demo and show you these input methods here. So the first one here is probably my favorite. So when I think of the equation editor, the equation editor is really your place for students to be able to make math and to be able to make multiple lines of math. So when I think about just, and I know we have lots of elementary, we got lots of middle, lots of high school people here, um, but I'm just going to type something basic in like an algebraic expression like 3x. And I always found as a math teacher, I didn't really want to teach keyboarding skills, right? So how do I teach math and not have to show everyone how to do superscripts and subscripts and find all these symbols on a keyboard? So what if I just did 3XSQ? 
So 3XSQ, you'll notice our prediction box pop up and I get 3X squared and I can just hit enter. And then I got MIN. So like I'm kind of even lazy where I don't even want to go find the subtraction key. So I just type MIN and hit enter. And then maybe 2Y cubed. And notice I just have cubed and hit enter. Move my mouse here. And then even equals EQ, enter. And then I get 15. And notice as soon as I hit enter, I can start making more lines of math. So I can start isolating a variable or I can start moving something to one side of the equation versus the other. Let's just say, for example, that I want to move 2y cubed. So if I do this and I type, I can simply just space over and start to move these. So remember, I can type in PL or use my keyboard shortcuts here, like 2y cubed. And notice here, we also, and I'm one of those picky math teachers that like my kids to make sure their math is aligned. So I get 3x squared is equal to 2y cubed and, oops, and then just do plus 15. So let's just finish the problem here. I'm not going to actually solve this. We don't have time anyway. But notice my alignment. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, are you able to zoom in on that? On I your can. Screen? Yep, yep. So that would be that wonderful. Thank sure. you. Is that better? Can you see that yes. better? Maybe? Okay. Yes, that's yep. much yep. better. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. So notice here, I am making math here in this bar. This bar can be moved up or down. So just know that can be moved up or down. So apparently you guys in the chat were having trouble with that. Sorry about that. Let me zoom uh, out and in just a little bit there. Now notice here that, and now that I've zoomed in so close, they can't see the alignment. Though. There they are. Okay. So notice here that I have this left adjusted. I can center adjust this. I can also right adjust this. So watch if I click here, it'll shift all these numbers and these lines. I can also add columns so kids could type out here like what are you doing with your math? Well, I've decided to move the 2y cubed to the right side of the equation. So I could literally click on insert text and I can start typing in our editor. Um, so if I wanna add text here, I can do that as well. So lots of different options here, but I think the main thing is, is you might wanna see what this looks like. I'm gonna zoom out just a little here so I can see this on my screen. Megan, is that still visible? Okay. Yes, that looks okay, great. Okay, okay. So this right here now is the math that I've just inserted. So remember, guys, you know, how did you make math before, right? So how did you get math into a Google Doc? Well, really, the only way to do that is to go to insert and go to equation. And when you do that, you get this little toolbar right here. And look, I'm not bashing Google here. I love Google. I've been using Google for years. I'm a Google certified trainer. You know, I love this, but this right here is just not going to cut it for me in a standard math class because there's just not enough here. I can't graph here. I can't have prediction here. I can't type in formulas. So let's go show you some more power of this equation editor. So if I open Equatio here, what if I want uh, the quadratic formula? So Louis here, all I'm doing is I'm typing in Q-U-A-D. All I did was type in Q-U-A-D and enter. And there's the quadratic formula. You know, it's just that simple to pop that right into the Google Doc. Whereas if I had to make this using the Google Math Editor, it might take me several minutes to create that actual line of math. If I click out here, let's go something more uh, for our higher ed people here. What about the correlation coefficient of samples? So a statistics formula. So if I click here, Look at that. That's how easy I can make the correlation coefficient of sample, C-O-R-R, -R, and tap enter. And when I insert that, that is going to insert into the doc. So lots of different things here. Remember, this is not just a math editor. It's also a STEM uh, product. So if I type in CH for like chlorine, notice here I have different types of chemical compounds available. So we have chromium oxide. So if I click on that, that'll produce you know, that content in a chemistry class. Maybe I want this to be something that uh, yields. So with heat, so notice we can make some of these chemistry symbols as well. You can click on the more button and look at all the different things that we have here available for you, whether it's absolute value, specific symbols that you use. We have all the matrices that you can possibly imagine here. So whether it is, and by the way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you elementary folks here in just a second because I want to show you some really neat stuff you can do in elementary here. 
and then look at all the formulas we have in our product. So these are all the formulas that we have in our product. And I'm just scrolling ever so slightly here. So it just goes on and on and on. So if you're wondering, hey, I wonder if this is in our prediction, well, just type in what you're looking for. You know, maybe you're looking for Simpson's rule for integration. Click on it. There's the formula. All I did was type in S-I-M-P, and I can insert that formula right into the Google Doc. I mean, it's just that simple and easy. Imagine making that formula. I don't even want to imagine making that by hand on paper and pencil, let alone using the Google Math Editor, right? So real quick and easy ways to access formulas. I'm going to pass over the LaTeX for time. But if you're an advanced markup language type math user and you want to mark up your math using LaTeX, notice right here, here's the Simpsons rule for integration. We're going to make the LaTeX for you. So some people, of course, go to school and learn all about this um, in some of their advanced classes. But we have a LaTeX editor in product if you're interested. But I'm going to pass on that just for uh, time's sake. So let's go here. Graph editor, probably our most frequently used product. Watch our graph editor. When I pull this up, you'll see that this is powered by Desmos. So you have Desmos graphing right in our product. Uh, I'm gonna type something very simple here, like the sine of X. And I have the sine of X here. And look how quick I can drop a coordinate plane right into a Google Doc. So again, real simple and basic. So if I make a mistake, notice that I can click on that image and I can click edit math and I can pull that back in. And maybe I want to change my graph. Maybe I'm doing, uh, I forgot my elementary folks. Let's give you an elementary example here. Maybe I'm plotting ordered pairs and I wanna do two, four, four, six, six, eight. And I go to insert this graph. Watch how I can then see those ordered pairs uh, on this plane. So real, real quick and, and, and nice functionality with our Desmos graph editor. Um, also here, and I'll go quick on this for time state, uh, standpoint, handwriting. So I have my own child who loves to you know, annotate or scribble on uh, using handwriting recognition. So what if I'm just scribbling and try not to make fun of my messy uh, handwriting here? Uh, it's not too bad with a mouse, right? So try doing math with a mouse. It's much easier if you have a stylus or a Chromebook or something along those lines. Notice I can give myself some more room. And also, if you look to your right, you will notice, oop, I made a mistake there. Let's see if it fixes that. That is a really ugly X, is it not? And it's still, even with that curl, it's still got it right. So you know your kids are going to make mistakes with handwriting. And even with that little curl, it's still got it right over here. This handwritten math can then be inserted into the Google Doc. And there it is. And then finally, let's look at speech input. So I'm going to cross all that out. I'm going to go to speech input. I'm going to go here and select start speech input. So here we go. Take a listen. 16x squared minus 12y equals 14. So notice when I hit the pause button, it'll record and, and take that aud audible, you know, dictated math and translate it into digital math. That then can be inserted. So we have the speech to math, uh, voice recognition, we have the handwriting recognition, and keep in mind this product was built on UDL principles, right? Not every kid that comes to a math class is going to want to use paper and pencil. Paper and pencil is good for some kids, maybe not all kids, right? So this was all built on those UDL principles to allow kids to feel comfortable and make math how they most feel comfortable. Okay, that being said, I want to show you one last thing here. I promised a couple people this um, earlier. So notice I'm inside of a PDF here. And we had some folks that said, hey, I want to use, you know, maybe some math and a PDF. I'm going to open Equatio inside of the Text Help PDF reader and take a look. I have some problems here, just simple solving of two step equations. So watch what I can do. And give me just a second here. I'm actually going to toggle off or toggle on my speakers that are sitting on my desk. And let's take a listen. I'm gonna use the screenshot reader and let's listen for the math to be read aloud. Okay, I'm gonna click on that box. I'm gonna drag a capture window and I'm gonna let go with my mouse. Take a listen. Four X plus three equals negative five. 
So for those kids that need the math read aloud, it'll read it aloud perfectly for them. I can then click on those three dots and watch this little bit of magic. We can pull that right into Equatio's equation editor. So then I can just go hit enter and start solving. Minus three, minus three, and so forth. And I'm not going to solve this, guys, because we just don't have time. But notice I'm going to put that fire-based image right there, that annotation. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to solve this problem for X, like the homework says. I'm going to click on that check mark. And that right there will be embedded as a, an annotation. And I can then do what? I want to save this to my Google Drive so I can insert this. However, your students are potentially turning in work. That's one way you can capture math inside of a PDF and have kids annotate. The last example is this guy right here. I love Sal Khan, big Khan Academy fan. Sal's a good guy. Uh, I'm going to click on this Equatio and watch how I'm now out in Chrome and I'm going to use Equatio to capture some math that's in a Khan Academy video that I've given to a student in my calculus class for, let's say, remediation. So I got Sal Khan's kind of messy yellow highlighter here, and I'm going to take a capture box and pull a box around this math on this Khan Academy video and see if it can read Sal Khan's yellow highlighter. Take a listen. F of X equals the fraction with numerator X minus one and denominator X minus one right double arrow F of X equals. So you get the idea. Lots of kids don't like to have that math or have that, you know, hand up where they're asking, hey, can you repeat that? I can hit this play button as many times as I want. The best part about this is this. You will love this. Watch how I can click here. I can take this math off this Khan Academy video. I can click here and I'm going to copy this LaTeX. And once I click on that, I'm going to now go back to that Google Doc that I've been using for this entire demo today. And guess where I'm going to go? My LaTeX editor. I just copied LaTeX, right? And watch now what I can do. I'm going to paste it. Control V. And look at that magic right there in the right-hand side. We just took that whole problem off of Khan Academy. We took the LaTeX off that page and we put it inside of Equatio. And I can then insert that math now into that Google Doc. For accessibility, I'm just going to touch on this real quick, and it's back to Megan. Watch how I can now click on this image. Now I'm going to right-click on it. I'm going to go to my alt text. Now, if you are low vision or you are a blind student, how can I participate in class if I'm low vision or blind? Look right here. We provide at Text Help because we're an accessibility company. We are going to provide that alt text for the student that's using a screen reader like JAWS or NVDA. Um, if they're blind, they can use that screen reading software. We're going to provide that alt text, and we're also going to provide the math ML for students that need that transcribed into Braille. So the last piece of Equatio, I'm going to actually give back to Megan. It's probably my favorite piece of Equatio. So Megan, if you can show the remote learning piece of how students can collect assignments and, and teachers can dish out assignments to their students, uh, I'd love for you to show the equatio.texthelp.com website. So can you take it? Absolutely. I always say for my teachers that this is where the magic happens. So let me hop in and share my screen here. And I'm going to run over to equatio.texthelp, excuse me, texthelp.com. And I'm going to sign in with Google. Now, I was watching in the chat that a lot of teachers were having questions about preschool and elementary. Well, this is where Equatio really, really sh shines. So su super simple. You already noticed. I go to equatio.texhawk.com and I have single sign-on. So I was able to sign on simply with Google. And you can see from my dashboard now that I have spaces, assignments, submitted assignments, and archived assignments. One thing I want to point out, though, before I dive too far into this is up here in this top right hand corner is this help and support and feedback. Equatio is absolutely amazing. Every time I provide feedback or ask a question or even sometimes ask for a product request or just a feature request, someone always gets back to me super, super quickly. And they're always working and expanding their products. So I wanted to point that out first and foremost. So check this out. So from spaces, you can see I have a bunch of different spaces in here, and most of them are elementary friendly. But let me show you from a blank new space. So what you'll notice on this blank new space is it's going to open up, first of all, in a new tab. So I have my dashboard and I have a new tab here. 
And I'm gonna point out this top menu up here. So this is where you would name your file. And then once you name your file without typos, you have all of your basic editing features up here. You also have this option here to import a file. Now this is amazing because if you have any files saved on your computer or um, you're able to drag those in like this hundreds, tens and ones chart. Now I have a virtual HTO chart for my students to use and I can insert an image in here. I'm gonna ignore this feature over here and I'm gonna talk about that last year at the end. But I wanna point out the Equatio menu at the bottom. So this has all of the same tools that Louie already showcased for you within Google, but it has some additional ones. First of all, it has this freehand drawing tool. So this allows me to draw right on top of whatever is on here. So really quickly, I'm able to, whew, going fast, um, just freehand draw on top of anything that I'm working on in Equatio. So I'm gonna undo that because that is a hot mess. And I'm gonna show you this tool over here. This is the shapes tool. So this, oh, my littles teachers, you're gonna love this. It's not just shapes. It's not just 2D shapes and 3D shapes, but it's nets, it is coins, it's my virtual manipulatives, everything that I would have wanted in, in my regular classroom for my students to grow and learn and explore with math, it is built right into it. Fraction bars, Venn diagrams, all ready to go, and simply with one click, and then I can click and drag. I have virtual manipulatives that my students can use and access um, within Equatio. Another great feature within Equatio is the smart shapes here. So not only do I have, say, fraction bars, which I can find here, and yes, I'm the nerd that sometimes just sits and scrolls and looks at all the wonderful things that are in here, but within my smart shapes, I can actually create some different things in here, like this fraction bar, fraction circle. I can draw my fraction circle. I can choose how many segments it has and how many numbers of segments it has. I can change my color if I'm feeling a different way. And I can create this beautiful interactive math space for my students. It also has that equation editor where I can type my math with my prediction. I have my speech input. All of those same tools are there, ready to go for my students. I do wanna point out one thing over here from the menu you have under the options. So you have some space options. You can go with a blank paper, squared paper, and even change your color. But for remote learning especially, one of the things I wanted to point out for you is once you create a mouth space, you can actually download it as an image. So you can take this to a, um, a student that doesn't have technology at home and they have the same interactive activity that you made for your students. But let's talk workflow. Once I create my math space for my students, I have the option then to click this button up in the top right hand corner. So once I click share, it's going to tell me that I can share this math with my friends, colleagues and students. This is huge because not only can I stand up with my students, I can also share this link with other teachers on my grade level. We can share the love and the workload. You make a math space for this activity. You make a math space for that. And then all you have to do is click that share icon and hit continue it's going to make it copy for each person. And then that teacher will have their own version of that math space on their dashboard to assign to their students. If I'm assigning it to my students, I click make a copy for each person and expect a response. When I do that, let me show you what it looks like. I'm gonna hop back in here and I'm gonna show you, these are some spaces that I've made. You can see some have images and pictures and manipulatives built into it. But once I hit make a copy and expect a response, excuse me as I scroll, here is an example problem. And when my students go to equatio.texthop.com and they sign in with their Google account, they will get that own math space link. So I can take that link, I can post it in Google Classroom and they get their own math space board. So here's an example with, it's actually my son, Cooper, and the teacher was talking with them about a raise and the students actually had to go in and use the smart shape and build an array to model the word problem and then show afterwards the number sentence that would be used for that. So then after I have that student work on my assignment, so let me show you here again from my assignments. I have this link, I get the link where I can share it again if I need to send it to another student, but I also see how many responses that I have. 
So I can go in live real time, see all of my students work, and then I can actually leave them feedback. So this feedback is titled on. So it's toggled on and I can use the text tool in here and write a comment like, great job, Cooper. But remember I talked to you about that importing files. One of the things that I love to do is use this Bitmoji extension. Lewis knows <laughs> I love my Bitmojis. And I will save these images into a folder on my desktop. So now I have digital stickers. And the reason why I do that is when I'm giving my students feedback, I can drag and drop those pictures into here so my students have a digital sticker on their work. And then for Cooper, when he logs into Equatio MathSpace, and then I hit this send back to student button that sends that right back to my students, he would see under his submitted assignment, his feedback on here from his teacher. Yeah, awesome, Megan. So perfect timing, good wrap up. I mean, uh, uh, you know, we really tried to finish on time. The only other thing that I wasn't able to show, which I'm gonna try to real, real quick here, uh, we've kind of given been given the AOK -okay to go over just the tab, but we want to try and answer questions as well. Uh, Megan showed, and you can see my Google form, Megan? Yes. Okay, perfect. So real quick here, I just wanted to show this, and I really only had like three minutes on the agenda for this anyway. You know, one of the biggest challenges really in remote learning right now is how do I know if my students got it, right? How do I know that they understood the work? How do I know that they're performing it? How do I know it's their work? So what's really, really great is we integrate with Google Forms, right? So can someone tell me in the chat another product where you can get math into a Google Form? I don't need to give you any time because there isn't one, right? <laughs> so, I mean, how are you going to get subscripts, superscripts, a Desmos graph into a Google Form? Our product integrates with Google Forms, which is awesome. So check this out. So I can go here and notice that I have a Desmos graph here. So I can ask my students what they, you know, what's the uh, slope intercept form of this line? Or maybe I want students to give back to me a Desmos graph and graph these ordered pairs. So how do I do this? Well, I'm gonna show this real, real quick for you. I'm gonna go to the very bottom and I'm gonna add a question. Actually, where did that question go? It's one right here. So let's do this. Solve for X. And this is my brand new question. And I want you to notice there are little, little blue icons right here. Once you install the Equatio extension, okay, this is also a premium feature, just so we're aware. Uh, if you have premium access to Equatio, you can send out Google Forms to your students, and this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm not gonna click on the Chrome extension like I'm used to doing. I'm actually gonna click on this blue button. So for the student, I'm gonna click here. You'll notice the Equatio toolbar will load at the bottom, and then I can simply type in my question. So uh, I'm gonna keep this real short. So X minus eight is equal to 16 or 18, let's say, and I'm gonna insert that math. And look what we're gonna do. We're gonna make that math for you and then I can make this the type of question that I want. I'm going to put short answer because I want students to be able to respond to me. So I can also go in and put an answer key in. So notice here that I have an equatio box for a teacher. I can put a correct answer in and use some of the auto grading features. But before I do that, let's take a look real quick from the student side. How does the student then see this, right? Megan did a great job showing how the teacher sends out a math space. I'm always curious, you know, what does it look like for the student, though? Are they going to understand this? Is this chunked, you know, really well for them? So as a student, the student's just going to click and they're going to click on that Equatio logo and they're going to be able to pull this math into the equation editor and solve. So they can just simply do, you know, plus eight on both sides of the equation and simply solve this. And for time, you know, for time's sake, look, I can just put the math back in uh, and then I can go at the bottom and submit this back to the teacher. So I just wanted you all to be aware that these blue icons, once it's installed correctly, that you will have access to Google Forms as well with a premium license for Equatio. Um, and that is really almost all the time we have. I have a couple slides. I wanna make sure that um, I go over with you and I'm gonna pull back up this presentation, hit that play button, and then we're gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna let you know that I gave you access to all the slides, even though I just kind of wanted the slides to be basically a resource for you, not something that Megan and I were gonna sit and show you slides all day. 
but the slides here are going to have some really, really unique links on them. So for those of you that joined, you're going to have access to a lot of helpful links here to help you learn more about not only Megan's part, but Equatio in general. And the other thing here that's important to know is that, you know, we want to just kind of reiterate, uh, you know, and kind of hopefully allow time for questions here. We can stay on a little bit after the uh, time. But uh, Megan, if you click on that fifth icon uh, at the top of the toolbar where we can share screens and whatnot, um, there's some questions in there that we can try and answer real quick. You said this was a Google extension add-on. So it's actually, it was an add-on, Dawn. Um, hopefully you don't mind me saying your name. So Dawn asked a good question. Is this a Google extension add-on? It is not an add-on. It used to be an add-on, but it's actually a Chrome extension. So you can go to the Chrome Web Store, download the extension if you're in the G Suite. If you're in the Windows platform, you're obviously going to go to the Windows Store and download the Windows platform version for our product. Okay, so does it read only in English? So that's a great question. You heard the math being read back in English. I would encourage you to take a look at some of Texthelp's other products. And I'll just mention ReadWrite for Google Chrome. ReadWrite for Google Chrome has many different languages. And ReadWrite and Equatio work together. So uh, for the person that asked that question, just please know that you can and you're welcome to download a free for teachers, a ReadWrite Google Chrome extension, and the, the uh, math can be read back in a different language. Um, so that's important to know. Uh, Equatio is free for teachers now. What does it cost for students? That information is going to be in the slide deck. Uh, I'm more on the product management side, not necessarily the sales side, and Megan's not with the sales team either, so we probably wouldn't be best to answer that. Um, but if you want to follow up with our team, you're welcome to reach out to me directly on Twitter, and I can put you in contact with the correct person. Are there activities in Equatio already aligned to Eureka? Megan, are you familiar with Eureka Math? I'm I am not. not. Okay, so we're neither one of us are familiar to Rika Math. What I can tell you is Equatio is not a curriculum uh, platform. It's it's a way that you can make and, and use curriculum within the platform. But we do not have activities that are automatically aligned to pre-published textbooks um, that are out there like Eureka or Pearson or anything like that. Um, so we are not a curriculum company. We just provide the the manner and the means in which you can use it. Um, they need this extension on their computer. Yes, they need the extension on their computer in order to be able to use it. Um, how do you access the Seesaw and put on the Google? Megan, any idea on that? So I, for teachers, all you have to do is go to ooh, their website is web.seesaw.me, web.seesaw.me. And you can sign up for our free teacher account. Um, and then Seesaw, just like Equatio, has tons of built-in PD and webinars. And all of the resources that you need are within their site on their help page to get you started. Awesome. So that, that kind of answers the seesaw questions there. Um, I mean, she's asking, uh, someone else is asking for suggestions of, you know, uh, you know, do you prefer seesaw over Google Classroom? I think the biggest answer or the best answer to that is I think you need to use what's going to be best and most beneficial for your students. What works for one class may not be the best solution for another class. Um, you know, and also I think it depends on what platform your district or your school has chosen. If your district has chosen G Suite for collaboration, then it would seem to me you would probably want to try and stick in that G Suite and choose Google Classroom over Seesaw. Unless, of course, you know, the kids aren't just finding Google Classroom and you aren't finding Google Classroom to be that best resource. I think, you know, going back to something Megan said earlier, uh, you need to do what's comfortable for you. Um, and understand that one solution for one teacher is not going to be the best for all. I think if uh, the person, I don't know if I'm supposed to say your name, so I just won't, but the person that's asking this question, um, I think it's just imperative that you do, if you have access to both of those products, um, that you kind of just take it upon yourself to choose which one best meets your needs. Um, anything to add to that, Megan? Nope, I think that was okay. perfect. Okay. Uh, how can we save the equation on equation or archive? I'm not sure I'm following that question. Would Equatio make sense to use for screencasting? So uh, this question is great. I, I, you know, look, if I was to go back into the classroom tomorrow, 
Um, again, I spent 20 years in public education. We didn't really have the devices prior to me just leaving and going to that district office position that I took. But if I was to go back to the classroom tomorrow, undoubtedly, I would get a screencasting tool, whatever that screencasting tool is, and I would use Equatio to flip my classroom. Um, I would show students how I'm using Equatio, make guides for students. I used to spend, um, you know, all sorts of time at night, you know, once my kids were in bed and, and uh, you know, you said the good night prayers. I mean, I, I got out my iPad and I worked for an hour or two every night writing digital notes on my iPad for kids. So what would I do? I would flip my classroom. Why? I had so many variety of learners uh, in my class that I needed more one-on-one -on -one time. And I will tell you, I'm guilty of this. I used to stand in front of that classroom and I would just go over the quadratic formula as long as I needed to go over it. Um, and I didn't make the rounds that I should have had. And I probably didn't have, you know, best teaching practices, some might say at the time. But I did everything I could to prepare my kids to pass that end of course exam. And that was most important to me. Um, and I will tell you, I had really good success uh, for my kids and their testing. So I knew I was meeting my kids where they where they were. Um, we use Schoology, so we need to use LMS. Uh, uh, good question. We do have Schoology integration. So Equatio, you would need a domain license uh, for the LTI integration in Schoology. What does that mean? That means that your whole county or the entire school domain would need to purchase Equatio. Once they purchase Equatio, you get access to everything, which includes that LTI Schoology uh, shared secret um, link that you're referring to. So uh, we do have Schoology. I'm going to try and find some for you here, Megan. Do parents have free access to these apps you are referencing? Uh, Megan, why don't you take that one? So all of the tools that I referenced are free for teachers and free for students. Free, 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 free. <laughs> yeah. Oh, perfect. So that, that's an easy one. I missed the yeah. first 10 minutes of the presentation. What do you need to do to get Equatio? So there is a slide and, I, and we need to probably move. I know there's some slides that I want to make sure I get to. Um, and I will tell you how you can get access to it. Um, if you want to keep an eye on that question, and I will let you know if we can have time to get back to it. Um, what I want to do, Megan, is go over these last couple slides and that talk about there's the link to the presentation. So how you can get in touch with us, text.help front slash remote math. So text.help front slash remote math. And I will warn you or caution you, if you will, that is case sensitive. So please make sure where you see an uppercase or a lowercase that you type that in accordingly. So text.help front slash remote math with a capital R and a capital M on that. So let's continue with these slides. Make sure we get them all in. Again, my name's Louis Shanafelt. I can't thank you enough for your time. Your time's valuable to Megan and I. Uh, and again, Megan, to sing your praises, I can't thank you enough for your time today. I know we're uh, taking time away from your family and probably your your normal job, if there's anything normal about our <laughs> jobs right now. Um, to learn more about TextHelp, you can go to texthelp.com, front slash E-N uh, hyphen U-S and front slash. There's a link there that when you get the slides, you'll have access. We would love for you to take a short survey to give us your feedback on this ed webinar. So that is, can be found at tinyurl.com front slash Ed webinar eval. So like evaluation, but don't spell it out. So again, it's tinyurl.com front slash ed ed webinar eval e v a l. Um, and I'm on the wrong chat window, but I yep, I knew that the Ed Web team would be putting that in the chat box. So hopefully that's easy for you to find there. And a couple more slides here. Just a reminder, I talked about this at the very beginning. We had some people join late. Um, you guys are missing out on a really, really good community of educators. We would encourage you to, um, you know, join at edweb.net front slash math. And you, as a member, you'll get access to all the resources. So view and share this recording. Take the CE quiz, download the slides, the chat log, join discussions. I miss so much chat. I think I need to go download the chat log. I probably had lots of questions we didn't get to. So we'll see if we can't follow up with some of you. Um, or you guys have uh, Megan and I's Twitter handle, so you can reach out to us there as well. Um, I'd be happy to answer those questions for you.
And ah, hey, the best part, it's free. Remember, <laughs> Megan said you guys like free stuff. So just so you know, uh, Equatio is free for teachers. So feel free to visit. Uh, you can just type in a Google search, um, you know, uh, text help, type in Equatio, just think equation without the N and type in free for teachers, or you'll be able to click on that link because I did hyperlink it for you and you will get a free premium license as a teacher um, to experience all the things that are uh, there available to you uh, for an Equatio user. So awesome, awesome uh, product. We really encourage you to take a look. We think it'll help immensely um, as you do this remote learning. And finally, there's my last uh, slide here is contact information. Uh, as Megan said, you know, we appreciate her, you know, uh, pepping up the product, but I'm the person that gets that feedback, guys. So when you see a formula or you see something in mass space that is not there, um, I'm the kind of the guy that can help make that happen. So uh, Megan was kind of referring to me, even though she didn't say me by name. I probably <laughs> didn't want to give out my email address, um, but I'm happy to answer uh, any questions that you all have. Um, you know, I'm an advocate and, and I'm kind of that liaison between you and our development team. So when you see something that the product could be better at, you let me know. I tell our developers and we work in tandem to try and make this product the best it can be. Um, please know that your feedback helps drive our roadmap. So, so many kind words in the chat. Um, we really cannot thank you enough. We thank the Ed Webb team for having this today. Uh, there are sensational ladies that have helped uh, join in on this webinar. And Megan, let's uh, say our goodbyes. Anything you want to add before we sign off? No, just I just want to tell everyone to stay safe, healthy, and happy please follow me on Twitter. I know Louie would like that as well. Um, but if you want to know just some more ideas of what this looks like, you know, we really are a community and here to help and support. I know on my Twitter handle, you'll find a ton of free templates that I've made for students in gr grades kinder through fifth grade of how to do a paperless workflow, all with Equatio, all there for you to just kind of click and use and explore. So please get connected with us so we can share. Yep. Awesome. So thanks again, Megan. We thank you on behalf of edweb.net. Uh, remember, don't forget to join the community. Uh, lots of great resources. So thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your afternoon.